be making basics. What's going on YouTube? Beat Making Basics back again with another dope video. If you're new to my channel, please do me a favor. Go ahead and subscribe as well as give me a thumbs up if you like today's content. Now today I wanted to talk about ox tracks in more detail and talk about like how to create them, what they are, why you should create them, and different scenarios and where you would need to use them. Okay, now first of all, an auxiliary track is a track that doesn't have any audio or MIDI information on the track. So for instance, with these tracks, as you can see, these are audio tracks, all of them, okay? So an auxiliary track is gonna be something outside of these tracks right here. And most of the time you're gonna see auxiliary tracks when it comes to mixing your music. So like if you go over here to your mixer window, you can push uh, either X or you can go to the top right here next to the scissors and click there. This is your mixer window. This is where you're actually gonna create your aux tracks, okay? Now, what an aux track is going to do, it has a couple of different uh, purposes. First thing I'm going to say it's going to do is help with the overall processing power on your computer. So instead of like putting plugins directly onto um, these different tracks and things of that nature, you can actually send these uh, the the uh, the plugins to the tracks a different way through aux tracks to make your computer run smoother. Um, also, what aux tracks can do as well is it can control the overall volume of certain groups of instruments, and then also it can actually control the overall sound of certain instruments as well. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Now, first off, let's go ahead and create an auxiliary track. It's super simple. Once you're in the mixer window, again, you got to push either X or come over here next to the scissors and push this to get to the mixer window. You're going to come over here to options. And the first option is create new auxiliary channel strip. So you can click that and there's a hot key right here, which is the up, what up, which is coordinated with uh, control and the letter N. So you can push control and the letter N on your keyboard to create a bunch of different auxiliary tracks. Now, when you do it this way, these auxiliary tracks are gonna be used primarily for like controlling a group of, uh, of instruments okay and basically what this is going to do is affect the overall volume of the the, the, the faders it's pretty much going to act as a, a controller okay so basically let's say right here i have these 808s all right all right so i got these 808s and say if i wanted to control them the faders and everything. If I go to my group right here and say group one, these two sounds will be in group one and then I can actually assign this auxiliary track to group one. And now I can use this auxiliary track as a controller and it's gonna control the faders here. All right, so that's actually just controlling the faders. It's not controlling, it's not actually affecting the actual sound, but it's controlling the faders. So that's why you want to group this together this way. Um, as you can see here, it's not going to affect the overall like panning in a sense, like it's going to affect these, but it's really mainly going to be for the faders. Now, that's one way that you could use to, uh, use these uh, auxiliary tracks. Another way here is going to be if you wanted to take the signals here and actually send the audio or the MIDI information from here to an actual auxiliary track. So I'm just gonna delete this. We're gonna go ahead and click off of these groups. And now what I wanna do is say, come over here to like some of my melody, which would be this one and this one. And let's say if I wanted to send this signal over to an auxiliary track, what I would do here is instead of actually creating an auxiliary track right here and doing it like that, I would come over here to the stereo out and come to an available bus and create an auxiliary track that way. Now, what just happened here is I want you to imagine a little bus right here, all right? And basically what this bus is gonna do is it's going to transport the audio signals from the, the tracks that we have highlighted and selected on to go onto bus one, all right? And it's gonna take that over to auxiliary one. For anybody who's uh, you know rode a public transportation, whether it be trains, whether it be a bus, 
um, you know what I'm saying, this concept would make a whole lot of sense, basically. But um, for the most part, these guys are getting off on this exit and they're jumping on this bus, which is bus one. And this bus one is going to take them over to auxiliary one or whatever we name this. So if I say melody right here, what this is going to now do is not going to control the overall volume. I mean, the, the faders, but it's going to control the sound. So what I'll see, what I'll do here is we're going to actually uh, solo this out and solo here just so we can focus in. When I push play, you're going to see that the signal is coming in on this actual auxiliary track. Now, why would you want to do that? You know what I'm saying? There's a couple of different reasons why you would want to put the overall sound or take transport the vo the uh, audio signals and put them onto this aux track. Number one, I can take this signal now and I can affect, instead of affecting the group where I'm just controlling the faders, I can try affect the overall sound of this. So say if I want to put a plug-in on, you feel me? I can put this smack attack plug-in on this uh, on this melody right here and boot, boost up the melody, make the melody sound a lot stronger instead of having to put this plug in on each of these. So now let's check it out. Now you wouldn't want to put smack attack on here, honestly. You might want to put like maybe a compressor or some other type of compressor on this, but the overall concept of what I'm showing you here is why this is why we want to create the aux track right here for the mix again what this is going to do is free up the cpu uh which is a, your computer processing power so for instance like right here say if i wanted to put you know what i mean like mv2 this is one of my favorite plugins i can use this to boost the signals of all of these melody tracks you know what i'm saying by putting this on here i can put eqs on here i can do a lot of different things so now let's listen to So basically, instead of me having to come over here to each one of these and put MV2 on here and then do different settings, I can put it on the same, put, put it on this aux track instead. Now, another thing I could do, which is the third way to use these aux tracks, is to actually, instead of now sending the signal to an aux track, we can send whatever signal is on an aux track to any of these tracks in here. So it's kind of like the reverse. So like with the bus example, these are going right here on to get on the bus and it's going to go to an aux track that when you use sends, basically it's going to send a signal from an aux track to any of these tracks here. So let me just demonstrate. It's going to probably make sense that way. So you want to go to the sends, click right there, go to bus, create an available bus. And now you have an aux track created, which is attached to bus one. So, for instance, now, like, say, if I want to put reverb on here, instead of um, instead of basically this reverb being attached to just these two, right? I can I can turn on my sins and put them on bus one, and anything that I put um, put the re I can put the reverb on anything that way. So, for instance, let's say we want to put it on this hi hats. I'll go to this same um, auxiliary track. I can name this reverb actually too. And I can turn this up and then reverb will come in on these hi-hats. So check this out. So it's just kind of that reverse um, option here. I'm sending this signal right here that has the reverb on on it, and I'm sending it to this 
track right here, which is actually one of my uh, melody tracks. Okay, and so hopefully that explains some things. Um, just to kind of go over it one time again, to create auxiliary tracks, you can go to options within uh, your mixer window. And you can create tracks right there. You can use these tracks that you create this way to group certain instruments and you can then control those instruments faders with this auxiliary track all right that's one way this to kind of go over this again the second way is you can now take some of these signals right here so say all the drums right here i can take these signals and i can put them on an available bus and send that signal to and this auxiliary track where it will actually come through here okay so now everything that you see playing right here is actually right here as well so any if i turn this all the way down you're not going to hear this why because this signal came and went right over here all right so that's the third the second way and then the third way was again taking the sins, creating a, a, a auxiliary track this way, put it on an available send, uh, um, bus that way, excuse me. And now we're gonna send this signal that has now either no effect on it or you can put effects on it and send this to any track we want to. So say if I wanna put this on the clap, I can send this reverb here here by busting it over and going to reverb or whatever I name it. And now I'll bring this up and now the clap should actually have a whole lot. So that's just a couple of tips and, and this breaking things down as far as what auxiliary tracks are and why we use them and in the multiple ways that you would actually create them. If you all understood this and it helped you out a lot, then please go ahead and give me a thumbs up in the video. Also, make sure that you, you know, tell me so in the comments. If you still need a little bit of understanding about aux tracks, why we use them and everything, just let me know in the comments and we'll try to maybe do a part two of this. But anyway, I appreciate y'all watching and I'll see you in the next video. We're out.